Welcome to GDs, and this is, Godfather of Harlem, Season 1, Part 1. Season starts, with Bumpy Johnson, coming home from Alcatraz, to reunite with his family. Being back, he is overwhelmed by everything. His daughter Margaret, comforts him. Bumpy later learns, that the Italian mob boss Vincent Higante, also known as Chin, is moving in Harlem. He goes to him, and lets him know, that Harlem belongs to him, and he must back out. Chin, not liking this, wants to take Bumpy out, but Frank Costello, another Italian mob boss, and a go-between among various Italian mob families, lets Chin know, that the other families don't agree with him going after Bumpy. As he never informed on the families, instead he went to prison, despite it being the fault of their guys. Bumpy, gets reacquainted with an old friend, Malcolm X. Bumpy learns, that Malcolm converted to Islam, and now he is indeed a minister, in the nation of Islam. Malcolm is trying to help the community, by helping people get rid of addiction. He asks for Bumpy's help, in shutting a corner, where drugs are being sold. Malcolm's followers, close the sale of drugs. Chin shows up with his men, as it was his corner they were shutting. But as he shows up, Bumpy, comes to support Malcolm. He has Chin and his men surrounded. Bumpy, lets him know, that Harlem belongs to him, and nothing goes in Harlem without his say-so. Chin, knowing Bumpy to be protected by other families, and being surrounded, decides to return. But his men Zambrino, threatens Bumpy. Chin lets Bumpy know, that he is made man, and if Bumpy goes after him, all the families will come after Bumpy and his family. Malcolm, though was able to shut the corner down, but he felt used by Bumpy for his gains. Zambrino, feeling humiliated, pays to have Bumpy taken out, but the man he send fails, and is caught by Bumpy's men. After holding out for a while, he lets Bumpy know, that it was Zambrino who hired him. Bumpy's wife Mamie, wants Bumpy to help out her friend. Bumpy learns, that she wants her son, Teddy, to be straightened out, as he is in a relationship with a white woman. As Bumpy finds Teddy, he learns, that Teddy, is in a relation with Stella Higante, daughter of Chin Higante. In addition, she stole a pack of dope from her father, as they were planning to get away. Bumpy, lets Teddy know, that if Chin ever finds him, he is a dead man. He makes Teddy leave town, whereas he uses Stella as leverage. Bumpy, kills Zambrino, for coming after him. Bumpy, using Stella as a bargaining chip, makes Chin, take the responsibility of Zambrino's death, by letting the families know, that he had to do so, as he stole from him. In addition, he also forced him to give up Harlem. Bumpy, also helps out Malcolm, by making it possible, so that he could speak with the followers of Congressman Adam Clayton Powell, as he made it possible for Powell to get on the ballot. Mamie, leveraging her husband's connection, also pushes the congressman to help her, raise funds for her youth outreach fundraiser. We also get to see Bumpy's addicted daughter, Elise. Bumpy gets her to Malcolm, in order to help her get clean. It is when we learn, that Margaret, is actually Bumpy's granddaughter, and her real mother is Elise, but Margaret, is not aware of it. As Bumpy and Mamie, raised her as their own daughter. Elise, getting sober, goes to Bumpy's house, to connect with her daughter. But Mamie, doesn't want her in Margaret's life, she threatens her, and gives her money to leave. As a result, Elise, goes and gets high again. Meanwhile, we see one of Chin's men, Ernie, being caught by the cops, for having drugs. It is when two detectives take him in. But in reality, they were on the payroll of Chin. They let Ernie go, and give Chin his drugs back, for a price. Chin, knowing he cannot go after Bumpy, asks the detectives to take care of him, and offers them 50 grand. Meanwhile, with Chin, backing off Harlem, Bumpy, needs steady and good quality of product, to continue running the business. But as of now, he has no suppliers. His friend Alejandro, gets for him the details for a source. As Bumpy goes for the purchase, he finds, that the detectives were waiting for him. The detectives, frame him for a murder. At the police station, Bumpy, was able to figure out, that the detectives are working for Chin. He lets their captain know the same. It is when we learn, that their captain, was an old acquaintance of Bumpy. Bumpy makes bail, while the captain questions the detectives. The detectives, threaten the captain, letting him know that if they go down, they will take him down with them. Bumpy, in order to resolve all his problems, comes up with a plan. Bumpy working with the captain, gets all the drugs from the police lockup. While the captain, with Bumpy's help, 
made the detectives look guilty for stealing the dope. Thereby, providing him a reason to take them out. While Bumpy, pays the captain for his help. On the other hand, Stella, is trying to get Teddy's music a chance, and has been working towards it. In addition, Stella, in order to make things right with her father, agrees to go out with Ernie. On the date, she meets with one of Teddy's friends, while Ernie, thinking that the person whom she met as her boyfriend, kills him. Ernie, lets Chin know, that he has taken care of Stella's boyfriend. Elise, hooked on drugs again, starts stealing to get money. But during one such attempt, she is caught. One of the black cops who caught her, assaults her, not knowing who she is. Bumpy, getting to know about her daughter, reaches the store, with his friend Malcolm. He learns from her daughter, that she was assaulted. But Elise, points out at the white cop for assaulting her. Bumpy, learning this, is quite enraged. And for the first time, he acknowledges Elise, to be his daughter publicly. Malcolm, gets him to calm down, and assures him, that their voices will be heard. As the news of the incident spread, Reverend Powell, who is pushing for a civil rights bill for the blacks, also reaches the store, to show his support. Both Malcolm X, as well as Reverend Powell, try to make the most of the situation. While Bumpy, connects with her daughter Elise, and learns, that she blames him for her situation. As they talked, Bumpy, was able to figure out, that it was indeed the black cop who attacked her. Chin, learning about the issue, and knowing the store being surrounded by Malcolm's people, asks Bumpy for a meeting, with Frank being the mediator. Chin, wants Bumpy to defuse the situation, so that the store is not destroyed, as it is in his protection. Bumpy, figures out, that Chin, wants something to stay hidden in the store. Nevertheless, he agrees for the same, provided, the Italians, agree to supply him their dope. Chin, seeing now other way, agrees for the same. Bumpy, reaching back, let the cops know, that the only way for them to defuse the situation, is by arresting the white cop, and they can later release him. Cops, seeing no other way, decide to do the same. With Bumpy and Elise making an appeal, the crowd, finally disperses. Elise, going through the ordeal, wants to take control of her life back, and she decides to get clean. While Bumpy, gets hold of the cop, who assaulted her daughter, and he gets what he deserved. We also find out, that Chin, didn't want the store to be damaged, as in its basement, he has a body buried. Chin, knowing the location to be compromised, shifts the body. He later confessed to his brother, who is a priest, that he paid for the boy to be killed, years back, as he was not happy seeing him involved with her daughter. We learn, that the boy, was the son of Joe Bonanno, one of the mob family's boss, having a lot of power. Later, we see Bumpy, interacting with a rich white lady, Amy Vanderbilt. Bumpy and her, were intimate before he went to prison. But for now, Bumpy wants to stay loyal to Mamie. In addition, her group, is sponsoring Cassius Clay, an upcoming boxer, who will be fighting against a local boxing hero, Doug Jones. Cassius Clay, goes to meet Malcolm, where we see, that he is inclined towards Islam. Malcolm, has been supporting and pushing him, but asks him not to reveal his beliefs before the match. As a black, with Islamic beliefs, will cause many to stop supporting him, thereby ending his career before it begins. Ernie, was able to get a recording of this conversation from a source, as Malcolm's mosque, has been bugged by the FBI. Chin, using this information, blackmails Clay, telling him to take a fall, or else, he will release the recording. Malcolm, getting to know this, asks for Bumpy's help. Bumpy, informs Amy, and her friends who are supporting Clay about it. But they already knew about Clay's inclination toward Islam, and are not willing to get involved further. Clay, also makes an emotional pitch to Bumpy, asking him, to help him out. Bumpy tells him, that he should fight, without fearing for the tape, as he will take care of it. Meanwhile, we also get to see Chin and Bonanno, getting in a turf war. Frank, is able to get them to agree to a deal, where Bonanno, can use Chin's turf for business, but he has to pay him taxes. Though Bonanno, is not happy with the terms, but seeing no other way, agrees to them. While Chin, feeling belittled by Bonanno, gives him a tip. Asking him to bet on Cassius Clay in the boxing match, as he has fixed it. As the boxing match starts, Cassius Clay, fights his heart out, and wins. Whereas Bumpy's men, are able to get the tape from Chin's office. Chin, knowing Bumpy to be responsible, gets back at him, by taking out his men. 
In addition, he also fixes the lottery, thereby, causing Bumpy to suffer heavy losses. Bumpy, needs a lot of capital to pay back all the winners, or else his reputation will be lost. In order to raise capital, and knowing Bonanno not to be happy with Chin's deal, he asks him, to front him 300k in cash, as well as products, in return, he agrees to pay a premium for the product. Bonanno, is happy doing so, as he will get better profits, without paying taxes to Chin. Getting the money, Bumpy pays all the winners. But before he could get the product, Chin's men, get to the exchange before him, and they take the products, killing Bonanno's men in the process. Chin rubs the same in Bumpy's face, telling him, that he should know his place. Bumpy is frustrated, knowing that he cannot go after Chin directly, as he is protected by the families. On the other hand, Reverend Powell, pushing for the rights of the blacks in the Congress, and to gain more support for him, tells his congregation, that the cops are targeting Latinos and blacks more for the lottery, while they overlook the whites. But he will make sure that it changes, and he promises to give a name, of white number runners every week, till action is taken against them. His sermon, struck a nerve with the people, and now, he is pushed in a corner, to give up a name. But Powell, not knowing any Italians involved, asks Bumpy for names. Bumpy, refuses to give him a name, letting him know, that he is not a rat. Congressman Powell, tells him, that if he doesn't give him an Italian name, he will have to give the name of a black woman, Esther James, which he got into his suggestion box, as one of the money runner, for the whites. Bumpy, advises him not to do so. But when pushed in an interview, he ends up naming Esther James, as a bag lady for the whites. But it turns out not to be the case. Esther, confront Powell, slaps him, and then sues him. Congressman Powell, not being able to provide a legitimate white name, pushes an Italian informant, in a congressional hearing, to spill the beans on the Italian crime families. Mr. Vellacci, agrees to do so, and he named Chin Higante, as one of the mob boss. As feds visit him, he acts as if he is not mentally stable, in order to avoid being questioned. Frank, makes Bumpy, Chin, and Bonanno, sit together, to settle the dispute. Chin, lets Frank know, that he was in the right, getting the products, as Bonanno, went back on his words, and he is not giving the products back. Bonanno, accepts the loss, but he wants Bumpy to pay him the cash he fronted to him. Bumpy tells him, that he doesn't have the cash as of now. As he was hoping to pay him back from the profits, but he never got the products. Frank, comes up with a resolution, letting Bumpy know, that his debt will be forgotten, if he takes out Velocci, who has agreed to inform on them. Bumpy, having no choice, goes after Velocci. But with his friend Alejandro, mixing up the room numbers, they fail. And now, it's impossible for them to get to Velocci. Congressman Powell, pushes Velocci for more names. Velocci, fearing for his life, agrees to give one more name, but not that of a mob boss, but of someone who has worked with all the families, and can give a lot more information. Chin, having his sources, was able to find out, that Velocci, will be naming Alejandro, and since Bumpy failed to take out Velocci, he must now take care of his friend Alejandro, before he goes on the record. Bumpy visits Alejandro. He learns from him, that he has been offered a deal. Alejandro, tells Bumpy, that he will be going into witness protection. He assures Bumpy, that he will never give him up. But Bumpy, knowing Alejandro is going to talk, and him being in debt, shoots and kills him. This clears Bumpy's debt. Thanks for watching. And if you liked it, please subscribe.